never really seen before, at least not in a long time. Record heat waves, California getting hit with hurricanes, and oh yeah, locally acquired malaria is spreading, which hadn't been seen in the United States for two decades until earlier this summer. So far, there's three states that have had locally acquired malaria. Welcome back to another video, guys. And just recently, Maryland officials announced that a malaria case had been confirmed in a resident living in the Washington, D.C. area who had not traveled recently outside the country or to other states where malaria has been transmitted, for example, Florida and Texas. The patient in Maryland whose age and gender were not made public they were hospitalized and they're now recovering from the deadly mosquito-borne disease, which is actually caused by a protozoan parasite. So this patient had gone to the hospital because of symptoms that started with fever and sweating, which is typical for malaria. It's speculated that the patient may have gotten malaria after being bitten by an Anopheles, that's the type of mosquito, the uh, Anopheles mosquito that had picked up the parasite by biting and eating the blood from a recent traveler who'd returned to the United States with the disease. So this is the most likely scenario because the strain is different from the locally acquired cases that are in Florida and Texas. So how does this parasite go from one person to another in the United States? One of the ways that this could happen is that a person who traveled to somewhere where malaria is more common for example, in another country, there's many different countries that have malaria. So they go to that country and where it's more common and then they get the infection there and they come back to the United States, like they come back to Maryland, then a mosquito bites that person and then they, that mosquito bites someone else who hasn't traveled. So what I can tell you is that health officials are taking this very seriously and they're actively investigating the malarial spread that's going on right now. So malaria was actually once relatively common in the United States, including Maryland, but there haven't been any cases in Maryland that was not related to travel in over 40 years. About 2,000 cases of malaria are diagnosed annually in the United States. Usually it's in travelers or immigrants coming from places where they have high transmission in other parts of the world, particularly Africa and Asia. Also, you can add South America to that list. Starting in May, malaria has spread in the United States for the first time since 2003. The CD said in late July, there's no reason to believe that the seven locally acquired cases in Florida and the one in Texas are related. There's still no confirmed locally acquired malaria cases in Utah, but there have been eight reported cases of malaria in Utah this year all contracted during overseas travel. Five of the earlier Utah patients had traveled to Africa and one to Central and South America. Now for malaria transmission to happen, let's say for example in Utah, the specific species of mosquito would first have to bite someone infected with the disease and then it would have to survive the roughly two weeks it takes for the malaria parasite to develop inside the mosquito before that mosquito bites someone else. This scenario actually requires a perfect storm type of sequence to occur, and that's why the overall risk is actually very low. So at this time of year, many people are being bitten by mosquitoes. So here are three tips to help you avoid mosquito bites in general. The Anopheles mosquito bite it typically bites in the evening between 6 to 10 p.m. in the very early morning between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. So if you have to be outside during these times, wear long sleeves, long pants, covered shoes, a hat, and use an insect repellent with 20 to 30% DEET, which is safe to use during pregnancy. Repellents are not recommended for children who are younger than two months of age. The Anopheles mosquitoes, they prefer to lay their eggs in clean, unpolluted water, such as a fresh or salt water marsh, uh, grassy ditches, the edges of streams and rivers, and small temporary rain pools. If you can, remove any puddles of water or standing water that are nearby. And you're gonna wanna keep doors, windows, and screens in good condition so that they serve as a solid barrier to those mosquitoes. There are different types of malaria due to the different species of the protozoan parasite. Some cause worse disease than others. The worst one is called Plasmodium falciparum. That's the, the worst species protozoan of malaria. That's the kind that you don't want. Um, but the good news is that malaria in general 
all of them. They are treatable. Of course, the sooner the treatment, the better. The most common initial symptoms are gonna be fever, sweats, and chills in a cyclical pattern. Now, before traveling to areas that may have malaria or other mosquito-borne illnesses like Zika or dengue, consult with an immunization travel clinic and take the necessary precautions. Also at this time, because we have so many mosquito bites, dengue is on the rise, particularly in Florida. And if you wanna learn more about dengue fever spreading and what to know about dengue in general, definitely check out this video right here.